Well, welcome to the evening service here at Pine Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Thanks for tuning in, and may God bless you with truth, knowledge, and wisdom of his word here this evening. Let's begin our service here this evening, but having a word of prayer, if you would, bow your head and your heart as we pray together. Let's bow our head. Father, as we come to you in prayer, we do come to you with a grateful heart, Father. We thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for salvation, for your love, grace, and mercy upon us. Father, we thank you for the privilege and opportunity to be in your storehouse this evening. We thank you for your word and the power of it, Father God. And Father, we do pray for all these needs that's been mentioned this evening. We do pray for our country, our leaders. We pray for our missionaries, our veterans. We pray for all those, Father, in authority over us. We pray especially, Father, for the lost this evening. And I just pray, Father, that you'll continue to soften their hearts and give them another opportunity to be saved before it's too late. Father, I pray for thy brothers and sisters in Christ that we'll all wake up and, and get on fire for you, Lord, and go out and spread your word and to be a vessel, Father, worthy to go out and spread your word and to see souls saved. Father, be with us this evening and challenge us with truth, with your word and knowledge and wisdom. And Father, we'll give you the glory, honor, and praise in these things. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thought something looked wrong, I ain't got my glasses on. The title of the message this evening is Time to Get Her Done. It's time to get her done. You may be wondering what I mean by get her done. What do I mean? God has a will and a purpose for each of his children's life. We need to get God's will done, fulfill the purpose he has for our life. To get God's will done, we must have and use faith. We must walk by faith, be obedient to God, to please God, to fulfill the purpose he has for us in our life. In the Bible, Hebrews eleven six says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Faith is a necessity, not an option. Amen? We must have faith in and trust the Bible as God's word. Amen? In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14, it says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through what? Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, listen to this carefully. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. God's word is also a necessity in our life, not an option. That's why we need to read and study the word of God daily and as often as we can, we need to. We must by faith believe and trust that God is God. In Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, it says, in the beginning, what? God. If you can't believe that, there's no hope for you. God is God. He created the heaven and the earth. Are you fully convinced that God is the God of the universe and is a sovereign God that you'll beckon to one day? Are you convinced that there's a three-part Godhead, God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost. If you can't believe these things on faith, there's no hope for you. Are you fully convinced the Word of God, the Bible, is the Word of God, and it's God-breathed, God-inspired? If you cannot believe that, there's no hope for you. I want you to listen to these three things carefully. You must believe that the Bible is a God-centered book with a god centered message for a God-centered people. A God-centered book 
A God-centered message for a God-centered people. Does that not describe what it is to us? If you're not 100% convinced of that, the Bible is just another book. It's just another book. Another book on the shelf. And if you don't believe that, there's probably a book you have that's probably on the shelf and you probably don't read it. It's just another book. But for those who do believe the Bible is God, a God-centered book with a God-centered message for a God-centered people, you'll be the one who will walk in the ways of God. You'll be the one to be obedient to God. You'll be the one to experience the blessings of God. This can only happen when you trust in that. A question to you is, do you think the Old Testament is, an outdated, is outdated or is there any part of the Bible that you think is outdated, that it doesn't apply to you or doesn't apply to us today? You know, a lot of people, when they read the Bible, they'll say, this, this just don't apply. That's, that's old. That happened back then. That stuff happened way back then. That, that doesn't really affect us today. That's not really uh, means anything to us today. The Old Testament, uh, we, that's the Old Testament. Things are different now. We must realize and believe with all our heart that from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21, the last scripture in the Bible, is up to date. It is for us, and it's for our good and God's glory. Amen? The Bible is God's love letter to us. The acronym for the Bible is Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. This evening, we'll look at the life, the service, and the purpose of Moses in Exodus chapter 6. In Exodus chapter 6. There's a lesson, a principle from every part of the Bible. But this evening we're going to look at Moses for a few minutes. Exodus chapter 6. Now I'm only going to read a couple verses of Exodus. I'm going to read Exodus 6, 1 and 2. But I am referring this message from all of Exodus and even actually the the, um, the uh, chapters prior to this. Exodus 6, verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now thou shalt see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Let's share, I want to share a little bit of information about Moses and his life up to this point. You already know this, but just to refresh your mind a little bit. We know Moses was a baby Hebrew uh, child, male child. His mother saved him from death from Pharaoh by putting him in the ark in the river where Pharaoh's daughter found him and took him in for her own self. Where Moses grew up, in Pharaoh's court as an Egyptian, didn't he? Remember that? At the age of 40, he flees Egypt for fright of death for killing an Egyptian taskmaster who wrongly abused a Hebrew slave. He took it up his own self, didn't he? After 40 years, God commissioned Moses from a burning bush to go to Egypt to return to demand Pharaoh to release his people from bondage. Moses was now 80 years old when he approached Pharaoh. Moses was faithful to his calling, although he did make excuses in the beginning. Moses, just like we would, didn't see why, didn't see how he could go to Egypt. He's 80 years old and free the nation of Israel. Moses was doing like we would do. He was thinking, well, why should I go? It's not my problem. It's not my concern. He was in the flesh, an 80-year-old man. These excuses, if you want to write these down, I'm just going to give you the verses on for the sake of time. But there was five excuses that Moses gave up front. Exodus 3.11, excuse one, who am I? Who am I to go? 
Excuse number two in Exodus 3.13. What shall I say? What is his name? What shall I say unto them? The third one, Exodus 4.1. They will not listen or hearken unto my voice. You know, we hear him make an excuse. Well, why should I go with them? So how am I going to win them to the Lord? What, are they going to believe me? What am, I, what am I to say? Who am I to go? Does it sound familiar? We make excuses, don't we? The fourth one is I'm not an eloquent to speak. That's in Exodus 4.10. Well, I can't say, I can't get up and teach, I can't get up and preach, I can't do these things because I can't, I don't have a good dialect. I can say it honestly. The fifth one, send some other person, Exodus 4.15. So we see more that Moses was a human being and he was just like us. We can relate to him. We condemn or put down Moses for making excuses, but do we not do the very same thing when God lays something upon our mind or heart that we find excuses and reasons why that we can't do it or that someone else is better qualified to do it? Moses is 80 years old with no weapons, no army, no people or supplies to go confront a world leader, a king of the land who holds hostage the nation of Israel of two million plus people to tell Pharaoh to go to him, an old man, to go tell him, hey, you need to let God's people go. Is it, we must realize who is in control. Moses had to realize who was in control. Is it Moses and his strength, his knowledge, and some possible convincing charm that he had? No. It is God's will. It was God's power, and it was God's way. If you'll look in Exodus verses 2, 6, 7, and 8, we see what God says. He's letting him know and letting everybody know exactly who is in charge. He says, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Who is commissioning this to go get him, to free him? It was God, amen? Moses was only the person, the vessel to be used. Who's going to fight the fight? Who's going to win the battles? Who's got the power and the strength? God does. God is God. It was all about the will of God and the purpose for Moses' life. That this is the purpose for Moses' life. He was spared. He was raised up. He All his year, 80 years to, for the preparation and the time, and the time has come for him to do what God was commissioning and his purpose was for him to lead the nation of Israel out of bondage in Egypt through the Red Sea, through the desert to Canaan land. Amen? This was what he was wanting his life for. Moses was blessed to be considered to be used by God for this. Listen, every time that God gives us an opportunity to witness to somebody, an opportunity to sing or play the piano, to be of a service in the church, to go give a kind word to someone that's in need. When someone has a death in their family, and you go and comfort them and try to encourage them and show them the love of God. When someone's in the, messed up and they've made mistakes, and you go show them they can be forgiven by God and God will restore their life. And you go show them that they are lost and they need a savior. Anytime that we're being used to God, anytime we're sent anywhere to do anything for the glory of God, consider the blessing that you are chosen to do that. Amen? We've got to realize it's a blessing to be asked by Almighty God to do anything. It's a blessing, not a burden. Oh, well, I've got to go study. Oh, well, I've got to do this. If you clean the church, well, I've got to go clean the church. You was being asked by God to come and clean the church. Everything you do, do for the glory of God. Amen? It's a blessing to serve God. It's a blessing to be asked from God to, to do whatever that he's given you the opportunity to do. No, it's not always easy. 
Sometimes it's right down frightening. Sometimes you're scared. Sometimes you feel like a duck out of water. You're, you don't want to go talk to somebody. You don't want to go confront somebody. You don't want to go th do these things. But that's the flesh, and that's the devil trying to keep us from being fruitful. It's a blessing to be asked by God. God already knew what Moses was capable of. He knew his abilities and his weaknesses. He already knew everything about Moses. He already knows everything about my abilities and your abilities. He wired me. He built me. He made me. He knows who I am. He knows what I am, and he knows what I'm not. And the same thing for you. He knows what your hang-ups is. He knows what your sin problems are. He knows where you have problems. He knows what your hang-ups is and the things you don't want to let go of. He knows everything about you. You've just got to own up, admit it. Ask for forgiveness, ask for help, and ask for strength and move forward. This was the purpose for Moses' life to be used by God to deliver the nation of Israel out of bondage, amen? Why was this recorded in the Bible? Is this just another recorded, old outdated story that doesn't apply or mean anything to you and I here today? No, it means something. He's making a statement about our relationship to him. God loves us. We are his children, just like Moses was. We belong to him. We belong to God just as much as Moses or Paul or Peter or James or any of the other apostles. God loves us just as much today as he loved any of the, the saints of the old. Jesus Christ died for them. Jesus Christ died for us. Amen? He loves us just as much. We're in a different time period for a different reason, for a different purpose. There are souls today that need to be saved just like there were souls that need to be saved then. Amen? God has a will for every one of our lives. Okay, I don't really see us go lead the nation of Israel out of Egypt, okay? I don't think that's going to happen for any of us here, okay? But guess what? There may be one soul that you need to win to the Lord. Maybe that's the whole purpose for your life. I don't know what all and how he's going to use you in your whole life. I don't know that. But what if you lead the one that's going to leave a, lead a million to the Lord? Billy Graham, somebody led Billy Graham to the Lord. I bet you he wanted two or three people to the Lord in his time. Amen. There's all kinds of old-time evangelists that was noted for great revival in, the, in America and in other areas of the world. Amen. But you know what? Somebody had to lead them to the Lord, didn't he? It might have been one little old person, one little old widow woman. Maybe it's some little old fellow or somebody that's uh, hair-lipped and ain't educated, but they, they found Jesus. They shared him. They had compassion and shared what they did know. You don't have to know the Bible from the front to back to win somebody to the Lord. Just share Jesus. Lead them to the Savior. Lead them like a little child. Do what God wants you to do. Listen to me, young people. Listen to me, teenagers out here tonight. Listen to me, teenagers and young people that might listen or watch this video. There's young people that leads people to the Lord. He uses you now. You don't have to wait till you're old and broken down and gray and your mind's about half gone to serve God. Tell other kids that they need to know Jesus. Help your peers to know that sex and drugs and alcohol is not the answer to fun and happiness and peace in this life. Amen? There's a work for us to do. There's a purpose for our life, and it's not just to be holy in the bounds and the walls of an auditorium, but it's to go out into a dark place and live the life that God has called us to do. It's a struggle to be godly in the workplace. It's a struggle not to join in with the things that go on. It's hard not to be like everybody else. 
But you know, sometimes what we don't do speaks louder than what we do do. Amen? Being what God wants you to be. God has a plan. God has a bigger purpose and a bigger plan than we know and we can understand. Right now, I don't know and understand why things I, I do and I don't. I don't know God's big plan other than what the book says. I would love to see this virus go away. I want things to go back the way we liked. I don't like the way decisions is made in our country. I don't like how, how things are going in our leadership. But you know what? They are right where they are to be because God allowed them to be there. Huh? I may not like the outcome of a lot of things in my life, but rest assured one thing, God is in control and they're going to go the way he wants them to go. Rather we like it, rather we understand it, or rather we believe it, or love it, or not. Let go and let God. And let's do what we're supposed to do. Amen? This recording of Moses' life was not about Moses or about his accomplishments. When we said to read that in the scriptures, yes, we need to read it. Yes, we need to pick it out and, and detail it. Pick the bone and understand what happened in the details. I love to do that. And it's good to do that. Yes, his life was spared. Yes, he grew up as Egyptian. Yes, he fled the country because of a decision he made. Yes, he matured and aged. And yes, he led the nation of Israel out of Egypt through the desert into Canaan land. Okay, he did that, yes. But Moses didn't know this was the purpose for his life. Do you think he thought that he was going to do this when he left the court of Pharaoh? Did you think he thought he would ever be back? Did you think he thought he'd ever come back at 80 years old, go back across into Egypt and confront Pharaoh? Like Moses, God knows our abilities. He knows our talents. He knows our skills and our weaknesses. And what's most important is our life to God. He knows our life. What's important is for us to be available. Available to be used by God. It's not your ability that's so important. It's your availability that's important. You can know everything, and if you're never available for God, you're no value. You're no, you're no good for nothing. It's your availability. Do you make yourself available for the will of God? Our life as a Christian is not about us. It's about him. Did you know that? Our life should be about him. Every day, God, what can I do for you? God, show me, lead my path today. Lord, show me the way. Give me an opportunity. Lord, help me to be a blessing to someone. Lord, help me to share your word with somebody. Lord, help me to bridle my tongue. Lord, help me to have a Christ-like attitude. Lord, help me today that when people see me, they don't see me, but they see Christ. Amen? I want people, and I pray that prayer off of going to work. Lord, please let the guys I work around, let them see something of Christ. Please don't let them see me because I am definitely not worthy to look at. I'm not talking about just a physical thing. I'm talking about my life, my actions, my failures. I want to be Christ-like. I want people to see a glimpse of Christ. Don't let them see me for my sorriness. In Exodus 6, 2, he said, I am the Lord. I am the Lord in verse 6 and 7 and 8. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Say that with me. I am the Lord, I am the Lord, I am the Lord, I am the Lord. When you say it, it's got power, it's got strength. That is God. God has the power. He's got your life. He's got your problems. He's got what you need. He says, I am the Lord. 
I am the Lord. Ain't you glad that he's Lord? Ain't you glad that God's in control even though everything looks terrible in this world today in our country? Ain't you glad and got peace with God because you've got a peace of God? How? It's no wonder people's on drugs. It's no wonder people would rather believe a lie than believe the truth if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. I don't know how people make it from day to day without God. I don't. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, that you saved me. Thank you that I belong to you and you've got this. I can rely on you. Yeah, I may suffer, bleed, and die. I may be a martyr. I may be tortured. I may have a miserable life and death, but one day I'm going to be in my Savior's arm. Amen? About to finish up here. Moses didn't do squat. Moses didn't get her done. God done it all. God done it all. And if you think you've made some great accomplishments in your life, well, pat yourself on the back because that's the only thing you're going to get out of it. You ain't done nothing and I ain't either because we can't do anything, but God can do it through you. Anything good that comes out of our life or comes out of my life, it'll be because God done it. It won't be because I did it. So that's why when we read and we look at these things, we look at the factual part of it, but we don't look at the principle and we don't look at the statements and what God is trying to get us to understand. This book, this story is for us or it wouldn't have been recorded and inspired by God. We need to make ourselves available to the will of God. We must be faithful right where you are. That's something that has been coming to me and coming to me and coming to me, and I hope it'll stick to you. Okay, things is not the way we want it. The things ain't the way we like it. Will it ever go back to that? I don't know. It ain't looking too good, is it? But what can I do? What can you do? Be faithful where you're at. Be faithful. Love God. Be faithful. Try to be Christ-like. Read your Bible. Study. Pray. Pray for opportunities. Try to share the word. Be faithful where you are. That's all you can do. It's all God would expect of you. One of the biggest problems that we have, we often have, is we don't see ourselves being qualified or talented enough to do what God asks or wants us to do. Well, I don't think I can do that. Well, I'm not as good as so-and-so. I can't do it like they could do it. Well, why don't you get so-and-so to do it because they'd do a much better job. If God's asking you to do it, then it's for you to do. God's going to qualify you. He's going to give you what you need to do what he wants you to do. He's not going to ask you to do something that he's not going to equip you to do it with. Amen? Now, if you get up and teach, you get up and preach. I'm not a good preacher. I don't preach as good as Jerry. I don't preach like Billy Graham. But I'm not Billy Graham. I'm not Jerry Martin. I'm not. I'm not going to be. I'm not. God don't expect me to be them or any other preacher or any other pastor. He don't expect me to be them people. He expects me to be me. He expects me to be faithful. He knows what I got to work with, which is very little. And what comes out, comes out because he's got to be the one to put it in there, okay? Ain't nothing I can do about it. I, I'm am what I am. You are what you are. Be faithful with what you got, amen? We are not to compare ourselves to other people or what other people do. They may seem much better. They may do a better job. Okay, well, good. God should have asked them, but he didn't. So he asked you, so you need to do it. Do you see what it is? It's not your pastor's job to go out and witness and win every soul in this community. If God's sending somebody on your mind, it's your job to go do it. If he wanted the pastor to do it, he'd laid it on his heart. But if he laid it on your heart, it's your job. Don't try to pass a buck. Don't try to give it to somebody else. It's your job. God's asking you to do it. He's going to equip you to do it, and it's your job. You go do it, and God will bless you. It's time for us to get her done, to get right with God, to surrender our life to him and allow God to have his way with our life every day. Just give it. Don't worry about tomorrow. Let's be faithful right now where we're at right now today. Tomorrow may never come. In the morning, if I get in the morning, then in the morning I'll be faithful in the morning. Does that make sense? 
Don't worry about tomorrow evening. Take one minute at a time, like that song, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. Live one minute at a time looking and serving your Savior. Amen? Remember this, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Time is running out, friend. Time is running out. We're one day closer to meeting our Lord and Savior than we was yesterday. If you've never surrendered your heart to Jesus Christ, you better be asking God to forgive you your sins and to save you. Time's running out. Ask him to come into your heart and into your life. Surrender your life to him for his glory. If you're a child of God, it's time to get her done. It's time to do the right things. It's time to be faithful and to give God your life. It's time to get done what God is giving each one of us to do. Amen. I challenge you to do that. May God bless you. Until next time, goodbye.